This is me controlling visuals and audio with the height of my hands. Today I will show you how this magic works and how to connect it all up to Touch Designer and FL Studio. First we need to know how we can even detect the height of our hands. This is the Leap Motion 1 from the company Ultraleap. This sensor has three little infrared lights. When you put your hands above the sensor, the light reflects back to two little cameras. The sensor then does some fancy calculations and gives us back a ton of data. We can feed this data into Touch Designer. In Touch Designer, we select the parameters that we need, in this case the height of our hands, and convert this to MIDI. This MIDI signal goes into loop MIDI, which transforms a MIDI output to a MIDI input. We can grab this MIDI signal in FL Studio and link it to the cutoff knob of a synth. Now we use a program called VB Cable to send the audio back to Touch Designer. In Touch Designer, we send this audio to the speakers, analyze it and use this data to create our final visual. As usual, I will delete my entire project and start from scratch. Quick side note, if you don't own a Leap Motion, uh, you could always just use two faders on a MIDI board or make a constant in Touch Designer. This will work fine if you just want to figure out the connection between Touch Designer and FL Studio. This project is entirely possible with the free version of Touch Designer and the free version of FL Studio. I will put download links to both in my description. Okay, look for Leap Motion. Um, as you can see, this is not working yet. This is because we need a driver. This driver can be downloaded through the link in my description. Uh, it's called Touch Free. Um, so go ahead and download that now. If you've downloaded it, you get this folder, uh, Ultraleap, and there's a lot of stuff inside it. You need to find this leapc.dll. Uh, and if you found the folder, you need to copy this path and head into the Leap Motion library folder. Paste it in here, press enter, and now select folder. And now the sensor should be working. Yeah, perfect. Now we have a ton of data for both of our hands. Uh, let's first split this data up into two groups. Uh, we want our hands to be separate, so make a select and type in before the star hand uh, zero. And now everything that includes hand zero and then something, like this indicates that after that it can be anything, will be put into this. So now we only have hand zero. And we can copy this and change the second one to hand one. And now we can have, like now it's my first hand, second hand, and we can move them separately. Let's see, we only want the height of our hand. And if you move this, we want the palm data, so the palm ty. So we're going to do, let's see, select. And then we want palm first, so star, palm, star. Now we have all the palm data. And now we're going to do a select once more and do star ty. And now we only have the height of our hand. Copy these over and connect them like this. And now our separate hands are controlling the heights. Um, now we can connect a math to this. And we're going to look at the input range and see where it starts and where it ends. So how high you want to go. So I want to go until like 600 and the lowest is, uh, actually the lowest will be zero. So zero to 600. So if we don't have our hand above this, it will send out zero. And if we have our hand all the way up, we have about one. This will uh, correspond to our uh, cutoff knob of our synth and the why we don't like the lowest the uh, leap motion can detect is about 90 and we're not going to put in 90 because if we put in 90 and we don't have our hand above it it goes negative so put it this from 0 to 600 and the same thing over here this will be for the pitch 
Um, the only thing we're doing here is making it 0 0.5 to 1 because we, on uh, we only want to pitch up and um, in this case the knob I'm using in FL Studio is neutral at 0 0.5 and 1 all the way up and 0 all the way down and we only want to pitch up. The last thing we need to do before we can go to FL Studio is to rename the channels. Um, this is because MIDI wants really specific names. We're going to do channel 1 node 64. This is because MIDI started out as um, being a type of data you can send from a keyboard to a computer so it works in like notes and stuff just uh copy this it won't really matter um rename and the other one will be channel one node 63 uh, and then next we need a merge this will merge the channels together and next is a midi out now for the link um, MIDI out to FL Studio to work we need another piece of software and this is Loop MIDI this link is in the description and you need to download Loop MIDI it's really it's a really simple setup and if you've downloaded it and open it up it looks like this um, I'm gonna remove the port I al already had and we can just press plus add port and it does this automatically now we can go back to touch designer and I think now we can send out our MIDI. That's it in touch designer for the data part. Now we can go to FL Studio. We'll make our visual after that. In my intro I said this project is possible in the free version of FL Studio. That's completely true. The only hiccup is that you can't save your file. So every time you want to show it to someone or perform, um, you need to build it from scratch. This will o luckily only take like two or three minutes. Um, so we can work with that. Let's go to options, MIDI settings, and check that in the input loop MIDI port is en enabled. So uh, if this is the case, we can load a synth. I like, let's see, flex. Now inside of flex, choose head buzzer. And now we can hold our hand above our leap motion and it starts playing, but it sp starts playing a specific note. So uh, we don't want that. We want to link it to the cutoff knob. And to do this, it, we right click the cutoff knob while moving our hand and say link to controller. And now, it listens to the height of our hand. Um, now if we stop and put our hand above, it won't uh, play because we're not playing a key, we're just adjusting the cutoff. So we're going to go into piano roll and choose, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's great. And go we're going to make this uh, really long. So it keeps playing, something like this. And now if we play and put our hand above, we can control the cutoff with the height of our hand. That's really cool. Now we just need to link our uh, second hand and we want to control the pitch. So I set this to 12 and I want to control this knob, but because this will always be our second hand. Uh, leap motion works like this. If I put my hand above, this is currently my right hand. If I take it away and put my left hand above, it still thinks it's my first hand. So only when you put your second hand above, uh, the second signal gets generated. And because configuring something in a computer program while holding both of your hands in the air is a bit, bit stupid, we're going to make our life a bit easier by inserting an LFO and a math. And this should go, the input range from an LFO is always minus one to one and we want for the pitch 0 0.5 to one. So we're going to do this. And now for a while, this will just send a pulse on the other channel so we get this here and we can connect it to the pitch uh, link to controller and now this is 
pitching like crazy. That's uh, a bit wild. Uh, but now we can put this back and delete this. And now our second hand controls the pitch. I think this is currently a bit higher up than I um, did the tutorial, did the intro with. So we're gonna take this down an octave. Still too high. This is this comes down to personal preference. I like it when it's a bit lower. I don't know why this is not working. Maybe we can pitch down here like this. Yeah, that's better. So our connection to FL Studio is now working. We can control the sound with our hands. Uh, now we need to send the audio back to Touch Designer. Uh, there's a great video on how to do this by Electronaut. Uh, I think most of you know this. I will link this video down below. It's a tutorial how to install VB cable. Um, I've already done this and if you haven't done this, just follow his video and come back. Um, you can go to audio settings and then choose, uh, let's see, cable, no, 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 yeah, cable input. And now the sound goes to Phoebe cable. We can't hear it anymore. And we can go to touch designer and make a device in chop and choose cable and now we still can't hear it, but we can get our audio in here. If we do a device out, now we can hear our sound. That's great. And now we can control this like we have an audio file and make a visual from it. So let's add a spectrum and analyze and then press Alt N to get a null. Uh, now we can start making our visual. Uh, look for a circle, change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 or uh, 1280 by 720 if you don't have a commercial license. Uh, now go to the radius and link the null to the radius and click here and add plus null to plus 0.2. And now if we put our hands above the leap motion, the circle responds to the audio. This data now goes through, through Loop MIDI, FL Studio, VB Cable, and back to Touch Designer. Really cool. Now press Merge and press Alt N to take a null. We're going to take some data to make our visual. Um, let's see, add a filter. After this, this will make the data a bit smoother. Like if we take our hands out the leap motion will snap to zero and this will gradually fade to zero now grab a select and type in 64 we only want 64 channel and do a math the input range is zero to one that's true if we put our hands all, all the way up it will be one and our output range will be minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. We can connect this later to a part of the visual. This is just convenient to have this. Now copy this and change this to 63. Change the output range to 0 0.3 to 1.1 and the input range to 0 0.5 to 1 because we set uh, this range earlier we set it to be 0 0.5 now let's go back to our visual uh, place an edge top after the circle and set the sample step to 3.3 this will make the line a bit thicker now add in a transform we'll use this in a bit next we got a component I made myself this is a feedback loop uh, but it can, can be slowed down. This is one of my uh, earlier tutorials. You can check it out and make it yourself or you can head over to my Patreon and download it. It would help me a lot if you do. Um, but for this project we're going to set this to 3 frames delay and go down here, press viewer active, 
drag this on the skill and go in here and type plus one and plus one now we'll be at 0 0.9 if we put our hand above it goes above one so if it's loud it goes to the outside and if it's quiet it goes to the inside uh, next we can press fewer active here and put this on our skill and now if our pitch changes so our first hand controls the feedback loop so if that goes up the feedback loop goes out and if our pitch changes the circle gets bigger uh, next we need an RGB key and then a null and you can record this send this to screens I send it to three screens in my setup but this is the visual we made.